All right. Hey, hello everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Um, uh, and uh, just first, want to say that um, really appreciate everyone uh, showing up um, to this presentation. I know it's late in the day, and it's the second day, so so um, really, really appreciate it. Um, so the topic uh, of today is uh, East versus West in terms of mobile game art styles and genres. And in more specific terms, what we're going to be looking at uh, is the markets of US, Japan, and China. So we're going to be doing a little bit of comparison between these three different markets. Um, but we, before we get to the actual beef um, of the presentation, let me just do a couple of intros first. So um, first, about myself. My name is uh, Kalle Heikkinen. And I work at Game Refinery as a senior analyst, mainly focusing on keeping our database of Chinese games as up to date and as comprehensive as possible. Then on Game Refinery, if there's still someone out there who is not uh, aware of us, um, we're all about features and feature level data. So we have a database containing over 10,000 game analysis in, this, in our system. Uh, and from that data, uh, database, we're then able to extract out data points such as differentiating features and feature trends. So in other words, we're helping, for example, different kinds of industry stakeholders to get a better idea of what's going on in the mobile game markets in terms of the feature side of things. And speaking of features, there's really quite a lot of variety um, in, the, in the features that we're tracking for all the games that we have in our system. So they range from uh, things like monetization, to re-engagement, from scope of the game, to social elements, from progression, to mechanics. But in this presentation, we're going to be zooming in to the visual side of things. And speaking of visuals, uh, there's a couple of terms that I just want to clarify uh, before we get to look at the actual data itself. Um, so I'll be using terms visual style and visual genre, and some of you might be thinking that, okay, what's the sort of the difference between these two? And when I'll be talking about visual style, what, I'll be, what I really mean is the style of graphics uh, in the game. So for that, we have three different values, manga, cartoon, and realistic. Then when it comes to the visual genre, that's all about the setting or sort of the era that the game is being uh, based on. And for that, we have realistic modern, realistic history, fantasy, sci-fi. And in case it's sort of a mashup between several different um, art genres, then it gets assigned uh, the value of hybrid. So in case it's, a, for example, a sci-fi fantasy uh, mashup, so this is a, like a Final Fantasy-like game. And then um, the last value that we have is the other. These games are usually sort of an abstract games, like an example that comes to my mind is the Candy Crush. Candy Crush games. So if they don't really belong into any of these other uh, genres, then, it, then those kinds of games get assigned uh, the other value. Now, um, I try to keep all the graphs at minimum in this presentation, but as we are a data company and this is a data presentation, there's no way around it. Um, so certain slides that I will show you will include graphs, and those graphs will in include category level data. So what that means um, is that we're going to be looking at the category breakdowns, where we're looking at how, uh, how popular different kinds of art styles or art genres are in these different categories. And uh, in our genre taxonomy, we have four different categories for games. They include casual, midcore, casino, and sports and racing. If you're interested to know what kind of genres and subgenres uh, fall under these different uh, categories, please feel free to take a look at the table on the right-hand side. Um, the taxonomy that we use is something that uh, we created together with the industry experts, such as the uh, excellent uh, guys from um, Deconstructor of Fun. But yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get uh, down to business. So um, I've divided this presentation into two different parts. First, we're going to be looking at the visual styles across these three different markets, and then it's all about the visual genres. And in case you're wondering, all the data that I'll be displaying is from the top 200 crossing iOS games. 
So first, on the visual styles, so meaning the, the, the sort of the graphical style of the games. And let's start from the US market. Um, here we have a situation where realistic um, and cartoon are dominating. And as we can see from the, from the pie chart here, uh, manga is definitely in the niche with the 8% market share. Now taking a look at a category breakdown, what we can see is that among casual games, cartoon is performing very robustly, uh, whereas among mid-core games, it's really uh, the realistic style that's dominating. Some examples um, of different uh, art styles uh, in the US market, I have the Star Trek game representing realistic, uh, Angry Birds representing cartoon style, uh, and I believe this was uh, episodes that uh, representing cartoon. Then, moving on to Japan, um, perhaps a bit unsurprisingly, uh, manga is definitely the name of the game here. Um, and also, if we look at the uh, different categories, we can also see that um, apart from perhaps sports and racing, all the other categories are dominated basically uh, by the manga uh, visual style. Some examples again, um, I have Monster Strike representing manga, uh, and this was um, the one that's representing realistic, is from uh, Baseball Spirits. Then, the Chinese market. Let's look at that. Overall market is pretty even out uh, between these uh, three different um, art styles, but we can see, still see that um, the realist, realistic style is the most prevalent one, and cartoon has the smallest foothold. And the category breakdown reveals that it's a bit similar situation to the US in the sense that cartoon has quite significant share inside casual, um, whereas realistic is dominating uh, mid-core. Obviously, uh, the number of games inside casual in US uh, was, was much higher, and uh, on the other hand, in mid-core it was much lower. So that's, that's definitely a clear uh, uh, difference, but in terms of the art style ratios, it's a pretty similar situation. Some examples again, um, I have Crossfire, um, representing realistic, um, that's an FPS game. Uh, then we have Anipop, match Tree game, representing cartoon. And then Honkai third, representing the manga style in the Chinese market. Then, let's move on to visual genres. And just as a reminder, now we're talking about, sort of, about the, the, the setting or sort of the era that the, that the games are being uh, based on. And let's first uh, just compare all the three markets um, in general. And uh, some observations that we can uh, do here is that um, in the US market, uh, it's really dominated by the realistic modern art genre. That's been followed by uh, fantasy and then the abstract other art genre. Um, in China, fantasy uh, is definitely the name of the game. And then if we look at the Japanese market, then it's a more like a mix of these other two markets. Now, let's zoom in to the individual uh, markets um, and to the category level. What we can see here, first of all, in the US market um, is that modern has a strong presence um, in all of these uh, categories. And what I would also note um, is the abstract other uh, others share inside casual as well as uh, fantasies uh, strong performance inside mid core and I have a example screenshot uh, from the BTS world game it's been doing really well actually in all of these uh, three markets lately it's an interactive story game interesting case um, the Japanese market then um, I think the most interesting Data point here is the high amount of hybrid games inside mid-core. So hybrid games, again, were the ones where several different kinds of art, style, art genres sorry, uh, are being mashed up together. And uh, other thing to note is that modern is dominating inside casual games, which was not the case, for example, when we looked at the US market. And as an example case, I have Final Fantasy Brave Exvius uh, representing this hybrid art genre. Then, moving on to the Chinese market. Um, what we have here is a strong performance of uh, fantasy uh, games, especially inside mid-core games, as you can see. Uh, that fact is definitely boosted by uh, 
themes very popular in this market, ranging from different kinds of pieces of uh, literature, such as Journey to the West, uh, uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and, and their romantizations, and also Wuxia related themes, and, and, and so forth. And as uh, example screenshots, I have one from MMO called Xunxie. All right, um, then concluding things up. Um, on a US market, um, what we saw is that um, games with modern or fantasy settings with both cartoonish or realistic styles uh, were the most common combinations. And if we compare the situation uh, to China and Japan, we saw that the US is uh, the, the highest prevalence of games that utilize the, the sort of the abstract um, other art genre. In China, uh, what we saw is that fantasy is very, very strong uh, in the market. Many games um, are based on uh, different kinds of Chinese uh, folklore elements, for example, and, uh, and uh, historical era, such as the Three Kingdoms era and stuff like that. So that's really, really popular there. And in Japan, uh, it's really about the manga-styled games, that's definitely the most popular art style there. Um, and the high amount of hybrid games is also something that I would note here. And then if we zoom out a bit and take a look at all the three markets together, then uh, I think some of the interesting things what we can, we can see is that um, there's relatively low number of sci-fi games out there. I mean, there are some, obviously, we have, you know, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, we have Ark of War, for example, doing quite well in the Chinese market, uh, but still, if we compare to the other genres, this is actually something that I think is quite interesting, that the, this, it's not that popular as compared to the other art genres. Then, um, not that many realistic history games outside the mid-core category, that's also something that um, sort of strikes the eye. And then almost all sports and racing uh, are realistic modern. Now I think it's going to be interesting to see when the new Mario Kart game is going to hit the market, how that will affect this situation, are we going to see more uh, copycats of that game and, and, and will, will, will that art style then become more popular in this space. And then just uh, final words for me, if you're wondering what's sort of the, what's the point of all this and what's the meaning of all this. Now, understanding regional visual preferences or actually any kind of fe uh, feature, so we could be talking about monetization mechanics, re-engagement mechanics, or anything of the, of the sort, is very, very important when you are exporting games to overseas, to foreign markets. Now, when you're in that process, do you utilize feature-level data to make sense of the market that you want to understand? And when you do that, as we all know, the market is very dynamic, so make sure that you have access to data that's as relevant and as up-to-date as possible. Now, if that's something that interests you, please feel free to come find me or my, my colleagues on the show floor. We'll be more than happy to talk about feature level data and how that can be utilized to boost your game's performance. And also, if you're interested, <laughs> feel free to add me on WeChat. I don't mind at all. And uh, yeah, I think that's it from my side. Um, so just want to say um, thank you for this uh, opportunity. And please, if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot them at me. So thank you. Uh, so, do we have any questions about the uh, art style differences between East and West for Halle? Uh, where are all the sci-fi titles? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's my favorite genre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's actually something that's that uh, we've been wondering as well. Uh, well, in the in the office, I think one reason might be that because we all also have the hybrid. Uh, art style as well. So some of the so sort of sci-fi titles that then also incorporate, let's say, fantasy elements in them, they, of course, then get assigned the, the hybrid value. So they might be absorbing some of the sort of titles that do have sci-fi elements yeah. in them. But even when that is taking in, taken into account, I would still 
dare to say that that uh, that the, the lack of sci-fi style is still still stri quite striking. Um, perhaps you can remind us the data that you have. What was the time frame that was taken from? Because I assume that what you observe is that those uh, trends change with time. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So this data uh, was collected in the Q1 period of of, of this year. Right. Yes, but in our service, for example, it's updated all the time. So if you were to log in there, you would be able to access uh, data uh, as relevant data as possible. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, does anyone have any other questions for uh, Allah? Um, just before we, we wrap up, we've actually got a couple of minutes. So do you want to just maybe use an opportunity to tell us a little bit about Grain Refineries tool, perhaps a little bit more about that, because there's some people here who might benefit from using your service, actually. Definitely, definitely. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're a data analytics uh, company based in uh, Helsinki, Finland. And as I mentioned in the, in the very beginning, uh, we are all about uh, feature, feature level data. So we have uh, clients uh, that use, use our service for things such as uh, competitor benchmarking, to know what kind of features are trending, how to implement those kind of features. We have, for example, a database of implementation screenshots for all the features where you can easily browse, check out how to implement those features. We have a database of first-time user experience videos in our service where you can conveniently check for, the, for, for, example, for example, for your competitor games, how do they onboard their new players, how have, they, how have they built up their tutorials, and maybe learn something from them and bring something from there to your game. And also, you'll be able to input your own game concepts um, to our system and test out how those concept feature sets would actually play out in the market. So there's really a lot of things you can do with the, with, in the service. And definitely uh, do go to GameRefinery.com and press the sign up button and you'll be able to access the free layer of the service where you can test, test around, the, around the service. And, and yeah, as I said, um, if you're interested in this, uh, you can find me or my colleague Brendan who's, who's back there and, and, and we'll be happy to talk more about, them, about Game Refinery. Great, thank you. Uh, last chance for, for a question before we wrap up the session? No, we're all done. Thank you very much. Well, look, thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.